Hello book club, happy Friday. Today's the day our poll is going up so that you can vote for what our July book club book of the month will be. You can vote using the poll on our corresponding book club Facebook group page, or you can leave a comment here on YouTube. So each time that our poll goes up for voting, I like to put out a video at the same time where I'm telling you a little more information about the books that are in the poll, maybe their descriptions, updated information about what the authors have been sharing that they're working on. And this time around, we have a really special video for me to share with you today. The authors in our poll have been working so hard to make some video clips to share with you so they can give you a personal introduction to their work and to their books in the poll. Without further ado, here are the wonderful authors in our current poll. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Beth West. I'm a science fiction and fantasy author, and I would like to introduce you to Earth's Angels which is book one of my Earth Angels trilogy. Um, I would like to give you um, a short description of uh, Earth Angels and um, tell you a bit more about it. A mother's love will save her family. Her determination will save humanity. Her power will save the universe. Melanie had everything. Four wonderful children, a loving husband, a good life, until Earth died. Mel remembers none of it, not even the apocalypse. Five years later, Mel wakes in an otherworldly room and learns that angelic beings are using her as part of their plan to save Earth. Thrust into a world of ancient races and alien walls, Mel soon yearns to join the battle over Earth, but that means putting her husband and children in danger. Mel, a wife and mum, must discover her courage, power and destiny if she hopes to rescue Earth from the evil alien invaders determined to destroy everything and everyone she loves. There we go. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, I hope you get a chance to read it and I would love to uh, hear your feedback. Bye for now. Hello, my name's Josephine Wrightson, as some of you may already know. I'm an avid writer and reader and I've always loved words and books. And alongside these other great authors here on Heather's Book Club, my book is called Balance and Retribution. It's a two-parter, dark paranormal fantasy romance. I have, I love romance and all that goes with it. I can't show you my actual books because I have no paperbacks at home at the moment, but that is the cover for balance. Over the la I am actually re-editing it at the moment. Over the last six months, I have learnt so much. I've decided to go back over them and try and make them better. Within the next, I'm halfway through this one. Within the next week, 10 days, Hopefully it should all be done and uploaded. Now I'm going to read you a little. This is the prologue to Balance and Retribution Part 1. In the world we live in and the world as it was, there has always been balance. Balance in all things, right, wrong, good and bad. In all the things we do, there is balance, be it correct or not. Mistakes are there too, but still eventually there is always balance. Emotions which play alongside our lives, drawing us ever near, sometimes rational and often irrational, depending on who we are, what our hearts and souls swing towards. Not all of us born the same. Some would be deemed fodder for the damned and others, well, you can guess. But either would be nothing without the other. It is balance. The skeletons and souls of others always traipsing alongside, sitting where they will. All had them, the good and the bad, or so it was made. For without balance, there is nothing, even the dead agree. But sometimes the balance is swung heavier to one side and things change, as we all change with time and not a little effort. Sometimes it is natural and what we want. Other times it is forced and comes after a great battle or loss. But either way, it is who we become, whether it be right or the wrong thing. Balance is always required, just as with love, there is hate. Chapter one. Pratt. Annalise just wanted to scream. Huh, another one bites the dust. 
God would remind will you ever learn? But Annalise knew she would not. There had to be someone out there for her, not another weak will tosser that only wanted to take her body and make her weak. She walked and walked, not even stopping to look at or bother which way she was going, just grumbling to herself as she marched at a fast pace, being just so angry, especially with herself, until she realised how far she had gone. She cried out, shit, where was she? Suddenly Annalise realised she was not alone, that someone was behind her. She could not hear, she could hear his breath, for it was a he. Women did not breathe like that. Breath that was heavy and uneven. So near, too much so. It filled Annalise with horror, terrifying. It could be innocent, she tried to tell herself, calming her fear. But reality told her, no, not here in the darkness of the alley. Her very being turned to ice. It was not innocent. Annalise's heart suddenly beating so hard echoed in her ears. All sense left. She should have been wiser. Annalise knew that now, but not then, when the decision was still hers. Stupid, stupid cow. Her blood seemed to burn in fear, yet her being, still like ice between them, caused a strange sensation, as if her body could not decide what it felt. There was no balance in her. Without further thought, Annalise turned to see nothing. That sealed her fate. Annalise knew she had to just run, run out into the street and the people, whom for certain would be there and safety, without looking or seeing who or what was stalking her. But there was nothing. Her mind imploded. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rebecca Schmidt. And my name is Neve Schmidt. And we're the author duo known as Shara Reeves Press. So we were asked to do just a quick introductory video. Uh, I'm going to talk very briefly about our book series. As a whole, it's an eight book series that's going to cross over the three genres of fantasy, steampunk, and sci-fi. So it covers three worlds, each in their respective genre, and through the course of the series, they slowly begin to intertwine and collide. So our first book, which is what you'll see in your poll, is of Shade and Shadow. This takes place in the medieval fantasy setting. It follows two characters, Astrid and Lupo, in the immediate aftermath of this big war, this, this big coup that they were both part of. The book starts with Astra getting exiled from the very country she just helped save. I'm going to read you just the first paragraph so that you can get a little taste of it. This is chapter one. 284 days since the war had ended, and Astra wished to find herself anywhere other than sitting outside the proceedings hall. She was too sad to cry, too scared to run and too loved to be able to tell anyone. None of it made sense. Astra had exhausted herself trying to figure it out in words. Now, she didn't even bother to try. Now, if this perks your interest, or you've maybe already read it, we do actually have book two coming out this July, and that book is going to be introducing the steampunk world for any of you who are interested. If you have any questions, or you'd like to see more snippets or more material, check out our website or find us on social media. Where on Facebook, Twitter, and just generally around. Drop us a like. Hello, I'm Mary R. Waldering, visionary fiction author. Um, for your consideration this month, I have a revised version of my first novel, um, Voices in Crystal. Let me just tell you a little about it. Years ago, when I began to study mythology, it occurred to me that the gods and goddesses never seemed divine. They acted like super talented people, full of human passions and shortcomings. When they appeared in different legends, these various archetypes were threads woven into a tapestry of various eras and centuries. Now that fascinated me. So I began a journey of recording and relating these stories. Now I weave my God characters through all times and spaces. I chronicle and account it. We are children made of stone. Tiny voices are as grains of sand. Come to us, Mirai, man of I, man of the sand. The shepherd named Mirai discovers a fallen star. What he finds inside changes him forever the children of stone. They came from another realm in the form of crystals and gemstones, each possessing powers beyond human comprehension. The shepherd 
in gratitude, undertakes a journey to the city of the king in ancient Egypt. He will take these children to a safekeeping of priests and scholars living there. A young prince learns of this. Feeling slighted, he begins a lifelong quest to control the children of stone or to destroy this shepherd and those he loves. Join me, Voices in Crystal. The adventure begins. A tale of wonder. Hey guys, uh, my name is Michelle. I write under Emily Morheim. Uh, that's actually just my name. Um, but I have a book that came out in March that is a full length. Uh, it's technically a contemporary romance that has very strong women's fiction themes to it. It is called Fini. Um, it's actually the book that is up for nomination within this group. So thank you very much. Uh, this book is very strong on the women's fiction side, like I said, because it's centered around Finley, who is a young woman trying to work her way through some very stressful, traumatic things that happened to her in her life, and it's about her finding a way to heal and finding a way to you know, let love in again and let, let herself feel happy again. Um, it is, she is an artist, um, she hasn't really done much with it. So I'm just going to read the uh, blurb that's on the back of the book for you guys. Uh, it is, Finley was an artist, was being the operative word. She'd always been surrounded by art until she just couldn't be anymore. But when a tragedy left her heartbroken and empty, she found Ian's class. She planned to refresh and ease back into her painting. Her relationship with Ian changed that as he remained a constant through her turbulent life, becoming her best friend. Ian taught her the difference between the unfinished canvas and the artist that quits, helping her heal enough for her to possibly open her heart to someone new. But would she be able to? So like I said, it is technically a contemporary romance. Um, there are some strong themes in it that if you're sensitive to certain things, might be a bit much to handle, so I am more than happy to discuss any of those. Um, but yeah, it's, it's more so a women's fiction book than anything else, and it's very strong about Finley. The next upcoming Reads author on our poll that you can vote for this weekend is Helen Holder. She's a fabulous children's book author, and I'd like to watch this clip with you from the Deep Valley Book Festival YouTube channel. I painted him a magenta flamingo. It's kind of uh, putting um, imagination of the person painting the magenta flamingo versus his sister, who's a know-it-all. So she gives all the facts about flamingos, while he just goes right off on the on the, on the imagination of whatever it goes. <laughs> uh, and I. I wanted to share watching that clip with you because in this video, she does show um, some of her books and a, a brief description. So far, that is the one book that Gemma and I have read in advance because I'm trying really hard to wait to read them all until her month comes so that it's something I can do throughout the month still like we're doing with bigger novels. Um, it's a fantastic book. I painted a magenta flamingo. Gemma and I both loved it so much. So I can't wait to talk with her more about that book and about all of her other work and her process when it's her turn to be our book club book of the month author and again if you'd like to watch all of this video this is deep valley book festival on youtube and the video itself is called writing stories that engage young readers lots of great tips in this video i highly recommend it and i also recommend following the deep valley book festival um, for wonderful writing tips. The next author in our upcoming reads poll is Haley Fuchs. She's the author of The Secrets of the Tally, and I'd also like to watch a video clip with you from YouTube. This is from her YouTube channel, and this video is called How the 60 Day Novel Writing Challenge Works. Hi guys, my name is Haley and I am the host of the 60 Day Novel Writing Challenge. I'm the one who's come up with this whole plan for you guys, and so I want to tell you about it and how simple it really is at its core. So basically, it's 30 days of planning and 30 days of writing, but we're breaking that down into four steps. So I definitely recommend if you want to hop over to her YouTube channel and watch that whole video, that'll be up for Haley Fuchs. 
the 60 day novel writing challenge and the workbook that she had there. I have one too, because I did sign up to participate in this challenge. There's a book idea that I've had for a long time that I'm really gonna try and write during this. So I'm really excited. Um, and the reason that I showed you that clip is because for July and August, when she's focused on this challenge and on hosting it and working with everybody that's in it, um, I assume her focus is gonna be pretty much well on that. So I will keep her in the poll for July and August, but I'm thinking she would probably prefer us to not vote for her until after August. I'm excited to see which book you're going to vote in for our July 2021 Book Club Book of the Month. I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you again on Monday with a video where I will let you know which book had the most votes.